Hey y'all, me again. I wanted to review a game called Mainframe Defenders today. I made a review a few years ago on Into the Breach, which is also a roguelite mech tactics game, but my biggest problem with it was that it was much more puzzled than anything else. Mainframe Defender seems like an answer to that, with its feet firmly in the mech tactics camp, most definitely being about customizing big robots. It's not quite mech warrior online levels of customization, but it's got a really good internal gameplay loop with tons of mechanics to hang playstyles off of. You could probably tell looking at it, it's not a very pretty game, but I don't think it's quite right to call it ugly either. I feel like wherever the devs felt like they could put it in character, they, they tried to, and I still really like the icons of weapons and systems and such. It's kind of, uh, you know, harkens back to an older age where you just have a very simple pixel aesthetic that is trying to convey as much information as possible, while still being abstracted enough that you can't point at it and laugh. The game itself is played in the computer, hence mainframe, but the naming conventions and such add character to everything, which lets you imagine what it could be about if they had fleshed it out a bit more. The music isn't bad either, but you're probably going to be watching a YouTube video or listening to a podcast in the background, so it's, it's gonna be okay. This game's a slow burner. I just want to get the looks out of the way, because the game revels in being very tactically and strategically rich. You have a lot of different robots to choose from, with a party of four you stick with for the duration of a run, and all the robots can be played in a ton of ways. For one, you can equip any system onto any robot, up to a max of 4 systems per robot, and you don't need to have weapons, or you could just have weapons. Everything starts with a generic frame and the gear it comes with, and there's this upgrade tree of generic perks unique to each frame that lets you define its playstyle as you go on. I came into it thinking of something like an RPG, where you have a tank and a DPS and a healer and, and the like, but as I went on it kind of became obvious that you can't really fill a role completely with just the one uh, robot, character, frame, whatever. Tanks become prone to heat damage from heat enemies with poison and armor reduction, but if you focus on removing too much of that, then they just become overrun with normal damage. You sure up both of those problems, and the tank will be too slow to actually be in the fight in the first place, which at that point probably won't be doing that much tanking. Same thing with the DPS, with some enemies having very good armor for particular kinds of weapons, and other enemies having uh, good armor for other kinds of weapons. The game gives you so many items to play around with that I genuinely believe that you can spec a run to be based on any kind of mechanic you want to as long as you know what you're doing and you have a very specific goal for what each robot is trying to do in mind. That being said, you can't go wrong with a cannon that deals a big number, so if you just want to play for the first time and hopefully win, it's not like you have to be completely beholden to archetypes and like you kind of have with other uh, roguelites like uh, Slate the Spire or stuff like that. As you go on, you unlock more robots to choose from, and varying starting items for the ones you already have as well. You also unlock a bunch of new systems in the research menu as well. And while it starts off feeling like all of the really cool items are locked behind progress, I actually think the game gets harder the more you unlock things. The stuff you start with is like very self-contained and generically useful, whereas all the things in research are really interesting but are hyper-specific to a certain playstyle. You can see it come up in a run in the store and want to lock it in so you can buy it later, but Later might never come if you lose before getting there, uh, when you've pinned yourself into an archetype that you can't, you know, get to the end point of in time. It's really about surviving from the mission to mission, which makes it still feel tense, even though you are trying to get strong enough for a big final encounter. You kind of get that effect in a lot of tactics for light games these days, and it's not new to the genre, but it sort of made me appreciate it more how unlocking new things can make the game harder as well, which means that it sort of tunes itself up as you keep playing it. I've beaten the game on normal twice, and it certainly wasn't a slouch on that difficulty. It feels like you're unstoppable until you get stopped really quite hard. That being said, as a piece of advice, when the difficulty says things like easy, normal, hard, as you can see on the sidebar here, it's more important to look at the type of mission instead. There are, I think, enough different mission types to keep it interesting, but you'll probably see most of them in your first run when you win, and after that you'll want to stick to data retrieval wherever you can. It's not like you can keep doing missions forever, as the game has its final encounter after a certain number you've completed. And it's definitely the hardest mission in the game as well, so you need to be strong for it. But the difficulty curve isn't like a line. It's more like, a, you know, you choose what you, you want to do early on, and then you have to play it by ear and try and do the hardest missions you can while still surviving. Anyway, the game is incredibly satisfying on a mechanics and tactics level, which I hope I've conveyed in some, some way. Um, but I didn't really feel compelled to keep playing it after being on normal. I think after normal, the difficulty becomes as such where you lose a lot more runs than you win because the pieces don't quite come together, which can be fine in, in things like Slay uh, the Spire. But I think it works much better in those sort of games because they are a bit faster, whereas this one is a slow burner. 
A run will take you maybe three to four hours to do successfully, and unfortunately I just don't have the patience for that kind of thing after beating it twice. Particularly if I'm playing the first hour again and again on a harder difficulty. The game is really good, and I think it's going to be someone out there's jam, but I'd advise waiting for a sale unless you like uh, drier, more technical roguelites. Uh, an important thing to consider is the fact that every time a mech gets blown up in an encounter, you have to pay some money to uh, make its health top up again, otherwise it'll go into missions with half health. And since the game is all about sort of uh, accelerating to a point that you can beat this big final encounter, spending money picking up the pieces isn't exactly a very good idea. I think the game is very well balanced on normal, and you should never lose in a normal run unless you're trying for something a bit funky. Um, which I try to do because I think the funky runs are more fun in this game as well. When you have something come together and you have these unstoppable god mechs that can just go through a level and destroy everything, it feels pretty neat, you know? And I think that's kind of what like the roguelike genre is about, and I think as a tactics game this sort of fulfills that niche kind of perfectly. The dev seems really nice, and they made something very specific that appeals to my sort of sensibilities, and it's only about $10, so if this is your kind of thing, uh, please try giving it a shot, if, at least when it's on sale. I think it's uh, got a lot of depth to it that you might not see from the sort of simple art style, and it's clearly a, a, you know, an undertaking of love, so I'd like to support that if I can. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this. Hopefully I'll see you around.